Hi everybody, this is Ben, and what I'm going to do today is start this video process of recording RPG Maker VX Ace as I build a very small scope, simple little game. So if people like this sort of thing, I may make more games in the future. Uh, this is the RPG Maker version that my brother got me <laughs> years ago, and uh, he jokingly said, now, remember, you owe me one RPG a year. Well, I've completed zero RPGs <laughs> since getting this game and uh, program, game builder program. Anyway, but I have fiddled with it a lot, with a lot of different premises. What you're seeing right now <laughs> behind the new project window is what I just finished as far as... Uh, I just finished this yesterday. It, it's honestly really close to being done, but the problem is that when I started to, uh, when I was getting ready and everything on OBS, I went and I pressed start streaming. <laughs> so I streamed for an hour and 58 minutes or something with one person tuning in. <laughs> and I think when they tuned in, I had just left it running and left to take a break. <laughs> I was just going to cut it out. Edit it out in post, you know, fix it in post. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think that was around the time I took the break. So I think the one person tuned into an empty chair. <laughs> Sorry, one person out there on the internet. I don't know if uh, you enjoyed it or not, but if you did, please come back. I have more. <laughs> okay, so anyway, you see the work I did on that project, and uh, to be honest, I'm hoping to replicate most of what I have here in this next project. The premise is going to be that the character, the player is an imp, uh, trying to leave a dungeon that's been cleared of its bosses and adventurers are trying to wipe out the rest of the monsters and, and fully loot the dungeon so it's just a little one level experience simple keeping it simple so this is what you get when you first start up rpg maker vx ace uh, on a new project and the first thing you want to do is go down to the uh or first thing I want to do is go to map properties on map 001. I don't care about the name. I'm not showing the name to the players, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but I'm going to set the tile set for what tiles I'll be using to paint the map to dungeon. And I'm going to change the width and height. I believe the one I like is 25, 23. We'll worry about music and sounds later. Yes. This is the height and width I like. I feel like it keeps the characters mostly in proportion, and also that means I don't have to scroll on this screen or shrink it down with the half, quarter, one eighth. But you can see that you would, it'd be possible, fully possible to have a humongous map with the player just a tiny dot on the map as they traverse it, a la uh, the map for the original Zelda. So anyway, or probably even more so, but anyway, I'm just going to keep this simple. So let me scroll down a little bit here. First thing I'm going to do is set up the map again. And I'm not going to cheat. I'm going to do this frame by, well, not frame by frame. In fact, maybe I can blather on while I'm doing it. Maybe there's some some sort of something for you to gain and take away so I'm going to switch to the map editing mode there's map editing mode and event editing mode those are the most important modes the region mode actually lets you paint regions onto a map that's helpful in an RPG that's more old style where you want certain enemies to spawn in certain areas like maybe there are certain areas of the map you would designate with a, a specific tile that the player could be attacked and so you can make those different regions uh, act differently in that aspect. Again, I fiddled with this a lot, but at the same time, 
that by no means, by no means makes me an expert on it. Got your handy dandy fill tools. I'm going to fill in the outside, then I'm going to rectangle in the inside. Which is going to be like so. Go back to the pencil. We want an opening here and an opening at the bottom. And just like I did on the other one, I'm going to use uh, something that pops more on this map, the blue. Oopsie. That's simple enough to fix. In RPG Maker, uh, when you're in the map editing mode, and that's probably not the only mode, but uh, you can actually go in and just right click on what you want to put red blocks, orange blocks, left click to place, right click to grab something. It's very handy. This is a very powerful editor to make your, your games. I'm using the wrong one right now. I'm going to use the topper here to draw out the little labyrinth that I'm going to make. And this bottom section just makes it, it gives it depth. So I'm going to try and build this out. And just as I had on the other one, I'm going to place the doors over here and then go down into another section over this way. I might leave a little bit more space open this time to have just the adventurers walking around so that you have to dodge them, sort of. Rather than having a real tight, narrow corridor where there's not a whole lot else you can do, other than just go into the space and uh, and hide in a little cubby hole. But I will have at least one part where you do that. I think I'm going to put it right here. We'll put the cubby hole. We might need more space, actually. Two of those, and that gives us enough room. Well, not that part though. To put the depth, the tile that gives depth, depth, if I can speak properly. Um, <clears throat> this tile and the topper will both block movement. But if you don't set the toppers tile set obstacle uh, setting, which I may not even bother showing you here, I don't know, uh, then somebody can actually walk up into it depending on what the setting is. Some toppers are set as kind of a ramp where you can go in just on one opening, but you can set any tile to block vision. Uh, if any of you played Zelda A Link to the Past, the the maze where you find Sahara, whatever his name is, uh, the maze before that, to get to the center, you have to go through some areas that kind of block your vision in some parts. You can do that with RPG Maker VXS as well. <clears throat> and then I had a spot. I know you just saw it if you're watching, so <laughs> I know this isn't the exact same, but uh, I still want to make it similar. Now what I had it set up for on the other way, on the other side, was I had three doors that the player would have to get out of, or three switches they would have to hit to get through the doors in order to exit. So that makes it to where on one screen with one level <laughs> to go through, the player will actually have to visit each one. <clears throat> and rather than put it in a specific order, I'm just gonna have the other sections open for where they can go and get the switches, and then just have the last area have all three doors.
I'll come back to it in a moment. So I'm going to switch over to the event editor. It always starts out a player start position, which you can just left click and drag to wherever you want. Uh, we are going to go to the database. And I'm going to change Eric the Silver Reaper, a veteran warrior who fought on many battlefields. He becomes uncontrollable in battle when berserk to Ip. No nickname. Max level one. An Ip trying to escape from the adventurers. Trying to escape from the dungeon. Apply. Wait, though, Ben, that doesn't look like an imp at all. That's because I haven't changed the picture. Cool your jets, Buster. Monsters. It looks like this imp. We need monster one for the imp face. I don't think this imp is going to do much talking, <laughs> but uh, there, class soldier. But Ben, that's an imp. Not as I know. I'm changing the class right now. Shut up. RPG Maker lets you set classes to have their skills set up on which level they get it. And the imp doesn't have any. And the special features. These actually show you their targeting rate and their chance to hit. Their evasion rate, their critical hit rate, skill types, and then inventory types, like what armor they can wear, what weapons they can equip. The imp can't have any of that. No. No. The imp was bad. No. Bad imp. Bad. Okay. So our imp is now classified as an imp. And we have the correct graphics for them. No starting equipment or any of that. While I, uh, I'm going to get out of the database and save, because you always want to save a lot. Save, save, save. There's, see, there's no downfall. Okay. Then we're going to go back to the database. I'm going to go over to the system tab. And all these tabs have everything that I can think of for an RPG of the traditional style that you could want. You can affect graphics. You can change the tile sets where, you know, you can give it passage of four directions. You can make it a ladder or a bush to where it obscures vision while the player is walking through it. It obscures just the bottom of the player's vision. Uh, a counter does likewise, but to, I forget which one does the greater extent. Anyway, it explains so many things. Just mouse over what you want explained. It doesn't work on there, but it works on all of these, and it gives you a full explanation. Now, do you have to kind of figure out what the explanation means sometimes? Oh yeah, and sometimes you can't. And this is a terrain tag, assigns a numeric value between zero and seven to each tile. No specific uses are defined. The value can be obtained by using the get location info event command. For terrain tags that are obtained, those in the upper layers, except for zero, are prioritized. I don't remember exactly what terrain tag is. I think that that was something that I was trying to work with because I was trying to set up a location in, in my game so that I could sort of build like a stealth puzzle. <laughs> Again, I've worked for over 200 hours with this program over 240 hours and I just have fiddled with it and learned these things. A program with this many options, you're not just gonna read about it and learn it. You have to actually practice with it and see what it does. Anyway, I digress. The system tab uh, will show you the initial party, which you can change that. The title screen music is really loud. The, to me, the volume in a lot of this game is, is loud to begin with. So I just don't want my eardrums blown out when uh, I start testing the game. Normally I would test it a lot more frequently. The reason I'm not going to test it as often is because I already tested the things that I'm going to be working on 
in the other attempt that I made before I clicked start streaming instead of start recording. You can set all the, the bass sound effects. Let's turn it down. Uh, this one. Yeah, it's kind of loud. I don't like it. Kind of grating. The sound effects are nostalgic for me, though. I know they're just throwaway sound effects that anybody can use, but it reminds me of a game called Breath of Fire that I played all the way through on Super Nintendo. That game was a grind. Okay. We're not going to have other party members or anything. Save again. And save again for no reason. Uh, but we are going to create events that act as the obstacles in this game. For example, in this hallway... Excuse me. In this hallway, I'm going to create an event. I right-click, new event. And then I'm going to give it a graphic, and the graphic is going to be Eric the Silver Reaper, an uncontrollable warrior who goes berserk in combat, etc. Because <laughs> uh, he's not going to be used for anything else. So I'm going to set him up. I can change his speed, and I want him to be kind of quick, I guess. I don't know. Just, just slow is fine. I, I don't want people to have to sit there and wait for a long time to get through this, you know? If they understand the puzzle and they can get through it, when an event moves, using the player's movement speed as the basis. Okay. And this is the frequency of the autonomous movement. Higher number of short of the movement cycle. When an event moves. So I'm just going to leave it at faster just to see how it goes and the speed will be normal. Speed for when an event moves. That might actually make it really fast. And this is how. There's a difference. One is the actual movement of the character or the event, and the other is how quickly it moves. I'm going to set both to higher and faster. I don't remember which is which. It'll, in fact, I'll, I'll set it off. I'll offset it on purpose. I'll, I'll put the frequency to lower just so we can see. And then you'll be able to see what I'm talking about if you don't understand. And then if this event touches the player, it will trigger. So this is where you select the trigger for the event. So right now, all it's going to do is, well, it's not going to do anything because its movement type is fixed. And you can set it to go random. You can set it to approach. They're not smart about walls if you set it to approach. And the other one is custom, which is what I'm going to use mostly. Oh, before I do that, though, let me get out of this, save that, and move this event to where I want it to be. Right here is where it's going to start. And it's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to move left seven times, then turn right and move back seven times. And then repeat the process. So event, move route, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Turn right and move right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And turn left. There you go. And uh, at the very beginning, I'm going to make sure the walking, well, the walking animation we can turn on on the other screen, so. Okay. Apply. Go ahead and save that. Save, ED, save. Okay. And then go back to edit the event. And now we're going to say what it does when it touches a player. So when this event touches the player, we're going to play a sound effect and I know just which one we're going to use because I've already made two games and failed my recordings both times. 
Uh, well, I say that, but I think it was the third one. Let's turn the volume down a little bit, pitch up. Yeah, that sounds like an it being smacked, doesn't it? Well, if it doesn't, you're wrong, but that's okay. Okay. Depends on the imp you say. You play too many imp games, I say. <laughs> All right. Uh, so it's going to play that sound effect. It's going to move the player. Transfer player. And you can take direct designation and click the ellipsis over here. And it'll let you pick exactly where you want the player to be put. I want them to be put back in their original position. And OK. It's going to, they're going to be facing down and the fade will be normal. Apply that. And then uh, we're also going to set, instead of three doors, I think I might just set two switches. So insert, because when the player gets caught, it needs to reset those switches. So control switches, control switch key one. And this is going to be key two, key two. Apply the name on that, and then go back to the first one. OK. And what's going to happen is copy this, paste it right below, select it, and press space to go straight back to that editing. I'll show you what happens if you just double click on it like normal. You have to go all the way back to the command that you were at. Same if you go to edit. Space is just a quick key for it. So it's going to turn off both of the switches so that the player can't get killed repeatedly and still have the switch that they first activated still activated. Otherwise, it would activate the switch and rather than go back through the challenges, just get hit, go back to the beginning, and then go to the next switch. So each challenge that they go through, they're going to have to go back through after they get done with it, which I'm not a big fan of that most of the time. But in the case of this game, we're going to make it to where it can matter a little bit. So it plays the monster that you got slapped, transfers you back to the top of the map, and turns off the control switches, the keys to exit the, the dungeon. Here we go. <laughs> that's good, that's fine, that's excellent. Okay. You know, it's not even that hard to go in and change it to where there's a hard mode on the events. And I'll show you how you can do it real fast. On this event, we've got it set to frequency lower right now. But if I wanted to, you could also set uh, a conditional, conditional branch. And you could say if one key is on, like if the key is at the bottom of this uh, section, so they go down, the guys are kind of slow, and then they hit the key, and then after they hit the key, the characters speed up. So this having the switch turned on, you use that as a trigger, as a condition, and then you could say uh, to if that's on, then to set the self switch. For this event to A on so it turns A on otherwise turn A off there so what this conditional branch will do then is turn the self switch that's contained within this event which is A and you can have up to D I think yeah a, B, C, or D. So then what you do is you create a new event page. Excuse me. If you want to use the same graphic, you could even hit copy event page and paste. 
and then you've got two event pages, but you take this one and this one won't activate until cell switch A is at one. Then you go down to autonomous movement and you can either change the movement route just to throw the players off, or you could speed up the frequency. Like I'll turn it to uh, higher. <laughs> I don't know at what point the player won't be able to get through it, so it doesn't really matter since I'm just gonna be testing it anyway. But there you go, there's a hard mode. And uh, this will do the same thing if it touches the player, because it's just copied from the other event page, except that if key one is not on, it'll turn self switch A off. When that happens, this should revert back to the original. Should. If I'm thinking about it correctly. Because the computer's gonna do what I tell it to do. It just may not be what I wanted it to do. Okay, so for the hell of it, I applied a hard mode to this to where it's gonna move faster after they hit the switch. And let's put the switch here, new event. I'm just gonna go down and select the switch. Uh, which one do we want? How about the, oh, I don't know. I like the color of the green button, so. Green button's gonna stay where it is. It's not gonna, if it's set to fixed on this, it's not gonna move at all. The speed and frequency don't matter. It's not gonna have a walking animation. That's the animation when the event is moving. This is when the event, when the event has stopped. So if you turn on stepping animation, then like in the old time RPGs, you know, the characters who are in the area, they're, they're standing in place, but they're still moving like they're walking. You can turn that on if you want. Direction fix prevents it from changing direction and through makes it to where it can be passed through by other uh, characters, which uh, is a really, really good idea because any of you who played the old RPGs, you remember being in a town and like going into a spot to get a chest or something and then a townsperson moves in the way of the only exit to where you're at. So you're just stuck until that town person moves. <laughs> I played games like that. That's not funny. Uh, <laughs> if those characters are moving randomly, they may, I mean, it's possible they would never move from me. <laughs> Unlikely, but possible. Game devs take out. Okay. Hope I didn't spit on you. <laughs> so this is a switch and it's gotta be set uh, Let's set the action button. It makes the player feel like they're... I don't know. I don't really need the action button for anything, though. I'm just going to set it to when the player touches it. So when the player touches it, this button is going to have this graphic. <clears throat> and we're going to turn control cell switch A on which is going to bring it to the next page, which will only activate when cell switch A is on. This page is going to, well, it won't turn cell switch A off, but, oh, I'm doing this wrong. I don't need a cell switch. We don't need a control self switch because we already have the key switch. No, because we're going to use the conditional for the key switch. So I'm wrong about that. Okay. Control self switch A goes on when the player touches this. When control self switch A is on, then we're going to. Turn the control switch key one on. And I'm gonna give this a different graphic. Pressed. And we don't want this to trigger like that. We want it to just do it. So 
Auto run. Auto run. Auto run. And then. Ends running events. I don't want it to end all events, but I think it just means this event. And the next event processing. I think that'll keep the auto run trigger from stopping the whole game. <laughs> I think. Okay. So the button is there, the player touches it, cell switch A is turned on. When cell switch A is on, it gives this different pressed graphic, turns on the control switch, and then exits event processing. So now I have a button. Now let me get a door for that button. Actually, I'm going to go back to map editing mode. Because I'm going to extend this out so that I can have two doors here. Actually, I've got three sections, though. So, technically four, even though this isn't anything yet. So, let me go ahead and... I'll set the two doors up here. Then they go through the last section after they get the other switches open. So... Uh, two events need to be doors. So uh, event editing. We'll put one door here. New event. Let's make it look like a door. I'm going to do like I did with the others. So what door will be yellow, I guess. Can I change that? That's okay. I'm going to leave it like that. So this is a door. If the player comes up to it, and touches it. That's going to show the text. Press the button somewhere else. Dim background on the window, bottom of the screen position. That's what it's going to look like. Okay. Apply. Actually, that needs to be a conditional, I believe. Yes, because if the key is on... Okay, insert, conditional branch. If key one is... If key one is on, that's fine. I can use that either way. Cut that, paste it there. So, if conditional branch switch one is on, then we're going to add control cell switch A, and then when cell switch A is on, it's going to light up and have through so the player can pass through it. The priority will be uh, if the priority is below characters, and they'll pass over it when it's lit up. There you go. Okay. So if the player touches it, walking one is on. Then nothing. We don't need anything else.
Initial wrench. If key one is on, control cell switch A turns on, which makes this passable and open. If not, it tells them to press a button somewhere else. I'm happy with that. Okay. Save. And save again for no reason. I am black and white for no reason. <laughs> uh, copy the event. Paste it here. And edit. This is a completely different event. I'll have the other switch be a blue switch. Uh, I don't know. We're coming to the holiday season, right? Red and green, right? Right? Uh, okay. So this will be red. I know the other one's yellow. Sorry. Jeez. I've used these little bars, but other than being broken, I don't see a way to... There's not like an open one. Anyway. Uh, there's the one that slid up. But this one is going to adhere to key two instead of key one. And instead of press a button somewhere else, it's going to say pull a lever somewhere else. Or lever, if you prefer to say it that way. I like lever. I always say lever, but I like lever better. Okay. We've got our two doors that will block the player off from the final area. And we've got one switch. We've got one enemy that's supposed to get tougher when this switch is hit by moving faster. Uh, let's take this, copy this event, and put this down here in the corner. Paste. But edit this, and it needs to be a red lever. Should they have to flip the lever up or down? These are the choices we have to deal with in our lives. The questions our generation has to ask. Prioritize what's important. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to go from down to up for the lever. It just feels like it's more satisfying, like you're turning it on. I'm gonna use the same setup for the, we're just changing the graphic and which key affects it. Space to go to this, change it to key two, okay. Okay, apply, okay, and save, and save. Now we got a second button. So this should correspond. We've got our buttons completely set up, if I didn't mess it up. We got one enemy to test here. And then, uh, what shall we do on the other section? I don't know, I think we're ready to test because I can test the triggers and I can test the enemy and check on the speeds. So, uh, join me next time. I'll be uh, recording my first test of this and I'll see you then. Be good to each other. Hey everybody, I really hope this works. Uh, in VX Ace, normally when I click play test, it puts it in a tiny window for you guys. Well, I see the whole thing. It's not flickering or anything for me, but on that little play test window, it's just flickering like mad, going invisible, not showing you the whole screen. So hopefully this will show the whole screen. Uh, if not, this will be deleted anyway, because it's just a test of it. So.
<laughs> this is my second test of it. To, I tried changing a setting, and if this works, maybe you'll be able to see it. And if not, I'm gonna be going right back to that screen. I might include this anyway if it's funny, like the other one kind of was. Right away, uh, we're seeing that the uh, character pauses and then moves, and then pauses and then moves. And the movement is very fast, but the pauses are irritating. <laughs> I'm sure they're perfectly useful in a normal game somehow, somewhere. But right now, no, not so much. The basic premise uh, of the doors is that when you touch them, it says press a button somewhere else. You hide in the cubby hole, let him pass. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's going to be impassable, I think, once I hit this button, if I did it right. Nope, it froze the whole game. Remember the auto run setting? Exit event processing did nothing to stop that from freezing the game. So, I'm going to have to alt-tab and close it out. So, see you guys next time. Unless you're still here with me. Maybe you are. Hi. A skip dungeon. You are closed. Maybe the recording at least showed okay, I hope. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to try this again while I've got that on, just to see if it'll display properly. I don't really understand why the playtest feature doesn't work very well as far as recording. I didn't test that before. Got me! Me. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, time to get out. Because we know the button freezes the game. Did I test this twice, actually? You always want to test your triggers twice, at least, to make sure that they're working properly. Something else I noticed is that when I touch the door, it activates the text but I have to press a button to get off of the text. So I might just set it to where they have to press a button to get the text. I think that'll be better. All right, time to find out if it recorded properly or if it's a piece of junk. OBS Studio's a piece of junk. I'm lying. It's really, really good. I really like it. Okay, guys, one more test I'm gonna do here to see if I can record RPG Maker VX Ace when it goes into play test mode. I haven't changed anything on the level yet, so don't worry about that, but uh, here we go. I'm just gonna test this out to see if it'll stop doing the flickering thing and actually show it full screen. That would be super duper. Sometimes I think it's something about the input makes it refresh faster. Anyway, getting out of that, back to the main screen of RPG Maker VX Ace. Hopefully that actually captured it properly. But if not, I'm just out of luck as far as I can tell. Because I tried setting uh, OBS Studio to grab the uh, playtest. And then that didn't work, so I tried setting it to just grab RPG Maker VX Ace, which I thought I already had one for, but apparently I didn't. So anyway, I tried them both, and I tried my Game Capture Primary just to see if it would just grab whatever window was in front. Um, it's set to capture any full screen application, so I don't know. For some reason, it just doesn't grab it. Uh, anyway, uh, I'll finish checking this test and then slap it into the video, I guess.
You may as well see all the everything I'm going through. <laughs> okay, guys, so I didn't actually try display capture, which is set to just capture whatever's on the screen. So I'll give that a shot and see if it'll do something that the others wouldn't. And again, if not, so be it, but at least I'll have tried it all. I'd really like you to be able to see what I see on this. I see it full screen and it's all nice and not flickering. I really don't know what else to try though. I think that's about it unless I start looking it up. And this isn't about OBS. <laughs> uh, anyway, I hope you guys uh, aren't too mad at me for using your time to try and figure out OBS. I hope that somebody out there is going, Ben, dude, here's what you do. And if you know what to do, leave a comment by all means. Because... Uh, uh, I'd certainly be happy for more comments on my videos. You know, if you, if you want, you don't, you don't have to. Guilt. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I'll see you guys next time. I'm probably going to take a break for now. Be good to each other. Auto run.